Allie, whenever you're ready. Cue video. I'm calling the order, uh, call to order for the uh, Transportation Benefit District Board. Roll call. Uh, <clears throat> board member Jane Brom. Here. Board member Mike Saro. Board member Terry Potmeyer. Here. Board member Benson, oops, sorry. Board member Dan Grouse. Here. Board member Bruce Bassett. Here. Vice President Debbie Burtman. Here. President Benson Wong. Here. The uh, first order of business is uh, public appearances. Uh, is there anybody, has anybody signed up? <laughs> Ira, do you want to come on address the uh, the board here? Why not? Uh, Ira Appleman. Ira, <laughs> uh, Ira Appleman, 4436 uh, Ferncroft Group. Um, as predicted, uh, as we'll see in the agenda, uh, now the TBD fee can go from $20 to $40. This is what many of us predicted. It would keep on going up, and it will no doubt in the future go up a lot more. Uh, the council said, oh, it's only $20, but, but it is going up. Uh, we were told that uh, this was needed for critical transportation problems, projects. But $40,000 is being siphoned off for a shuttle based on our bad negotiations with King County uh, Metro. Uh, we lost most of our local bus service and now we have to pay for half the shuttle. Uh, so I don't think it's been too successful a year for the uh, Transportation Benefit District. Uh, I don't think we should go to $40. Uh, I think you probably should absorb the Transportation Benefit District uh, into the city rather than have these separate meetings, which now is allowed by state law. Thanks. Thank you. I don't see anybody else wanting to come and make a public appearance. Uh, so the next order is uh, the minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Okay. All those in fa favor of the minutes uh, as uh, drafted, please say aye. 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 Okay. Abstain. Okay. One abstention. <coughs> Thank you. The uh, now we move to regular business, and I'm not sure is it a chip or is it. Francie, okay. Francie, lead the uh, discussion on the 2015-2016 uh, budget adoption. Okay. Good evening. Um, I am Francie Lake, your Deputy Finance Director, here with Christina Sheck, your Assistant City Attorney, to um, talk about your TBD. We're going to hold your third meeting. Um, so we're going to start with talking about the budget, then we'll go on to talk about maybe the more fun part, the assumptions, options. So um, just a couple, a little bit of background and I'll try to go quickly. Um, Mind it was just about a year ago now when the city council established the TBD um, and then the Mercer Island TBD held its first meeting um, November of 2014 and adopted a charter and bylaws and passed um, an ordinance to establish the $20 vehicle license fee. Um, TBD collections started June 1st. Um, there was a six month waiting period. So it started June 1st of this year and in the first um, three months of um, collections we've collected 102,000, just a little over 102,000. That money is sitting in a special fund, a TBD fund, and, and can't go anywhere until we um, establish a budget. So just a couple of reminders. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of back up and talk a little bit about the City Street Fund. So um, your TIP is a six-year city plan, that other agency, not you, um, that's reviewed by the council every year. Um, and the city's TIP and the 2015-16 budget were adopted by your city council um, with the anticipation of TBD funding starting in 2015. The Mercer Island Transportation Benefit District budget 
for 15 and 16 establishes the basis for an interfund transfer from the TBD fund to the street fund. <coughs> um, I did at, at Chips and um, Debbie's request um, provide you with a copy of the most recently um, passed TIP showing the, the final changes that were made, um, if that's helpful. So just a little reminder on use of TBD funds, um, state law and our city ordinance restricts its use, but it can be used for operation, preservation and management of our principal arterials. Um, and in your TIP that encompasses the city's arterial street improvement program and the town center streets, which are also arterials. Um, it can also be used for high capacity transportation or public transportation. So your Metro Transit shuttle service um, is well qualified for TBD funds. Um, the TBD is a separate entity at this point must pay for its own administrative insurance and audit costs um, and then any remaining funds that are received by the TBD may be transferred to the street fund to pay for the arterial streets or transit um, shuttle services <clears throat> and here is a little summary of the budget it's what's shown in table one of your uh, staff report um, and it's pretty straightforward, but uh, your revenues to the TBD are, are your vehicle license excise tax. Um, and with the partial year this year, we're estimating 204000 And next year, with a full year um, of $20 license fees, we're estimating 350000 in revenue. So um, the professional services, the audit and insurance costs um, need to be paid for directly out of the TBD fund and then any remaining funds may be transferred to the street fund. Um, and so we have targeted the funds to go to, uh, our staff is recommending targeting those funds to go to the Metro Transit shuttle service. Um, you might remember um, half of that shuttle service is being uh, paid for from the city of Seattle. So the TBD would make the other half um, funding contribution um, and then targeting your main arterial project for 2015 which is southeast 40th uh, west of Island Crest Way and then um, your Island Crest Way arterial project planned for 2016. Francis, so you said that the uh, 204,000 was from three months revenue when did that uh, no no the 204 is our estimate of revenue for I'm the sorry, full I'm year from june 1st to december 31st okay the three hundred, months was a hundred thousand dollars that's what we've received for three months so far starting in june yep starting in june and there's a one month delay when from when the state sends it to us so i only have through august at this point so wouldn't you expect four hundred thousand in 2016 no it doesn't necessarily come in evenly it depends on when people buy cars and so We'll know better after our first year through, um, but uh, 204000 is um, by month the portion uh, um, that we estimated, but we won't know for sure until we go through a year to kind of see what, what our pattern is. Um, yeah, Deb? Um, quick question regarding the, the shuttle. My understanding is that there was funding that was coming from the city, from Seattle, and from Metro. So when you said half of the shuttle is paid for by Seattle, was that Seattle plus Metro? Or maybe I'm just, maybe I misunderstood the, the funding. I thought it was just Seattle. Kirsten, Kirsten. Metro is also paying a portion of this. The $80,000 was what they were going to charge the city for the shuttle, and then Seattle is paying half of that. So for the total cost, what's the, the breakdown between the city, Metro, and Seattle? Yeah, I, I don't know that off the top of my head, but I can get that to you. I, do, I don't recall either. I can tell you that we're paying a small fraction of the total cost uh, relative to what Metro is paying. I think, that's, I think that's important. If we can all get that information and as appropriate, perhaps included somewhere somehow, because I know that there have been a, a fair number of appropriate questions about what that actual breakdown is. Any other questions? So, I got a question. <laughs> when, <coughs> as I recall, and Chip, you'll remember this, this, I think that when the TBD was originally pitched, you had put a fair chunk of change in for the planner position. Um, 
the transportation planner position is justifying the TBD. Is that that's come out of the equation now? I don't think we ever tied those two. The the transportation manager is included in the TIP in the plan. In the street fund. Yeah. Now, I, mean, when I recall. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I I seem to recall that the 350, a relatively large chunk of that was going to the transportation planner. But if it, that's what, the what it what it does, <coughs> excuse me, is free up gas tax money in essence mm. to fund the position. Could we, could we, um, Okay, so money, money, money is fungible. So yeah. Matter. Any other questions for uh, Francine? So I did, go ahead. I did enhance um, the motion just a little bit from what's in your packet. So I have a proposed motion on the screen that you can, of course, discuss first. <laughs> so okay. go, why don't you go ahead and, and explain why you are elaborating on your motion. So state law does not um, require us to do a budget. So normally with the city, um, we pass an ordinance to adopt a budget. In this case, um, we're adopting a budget for the TBD just by motion. So I wanted to make it um, really specific so you could trace back to uh, the table that's included in your, your uh, staff report in, your, um, in the agenda item. Okay. Dan, did you have a question? It's not a question, just a sort of a comment. Um, I don't know, Benson, how many people you had co have you copied on your emails you've, you've been sending to staff on the um, after the year, after the transportation conference. Um, but what what I found intriguing about that, and, and maybe why don't I let you explain what what those emails were about the about the um, automated the the cars that uh, and the, the vendor who might be interested. Okay. okay. Well. Uh, you know, uh, I, a number of us attended this transportation uh, symposium, and there was one vendor, Blackmore, that uh, I found particularly intriguing. So I ended up talking with that person after the uh, after the break or during one of the breaks. And so uh, I understand that Kirsten has set up a conference call for this week to explore the possibility of how their services might be um, of some value to <coughs> Mr. Island. They basically involved in developing pilot or demonstration projects involving autonomous vehicles. Yeah, driving those cars, which is you know, similar to what Steve Marshall has also been doing down in Fort Lewis. And, and I mention that because it, it, it intrigues me that if, if we're trying to, to sort of be proactive here in, in, in going forward, whether using the TBD to put aside some money for innovative projects might be a, something to consider doing, and, and I don't have an amount necessarily, but you know, we, I, I, I'd like to believe that this this TBD can actually has some special value to to Islanders rather than just a source of additional money to pay for the same old, same old. And I think the shuttle service is a good example of that, and and but you know, and and I'm not saying that the project with Blackmore or or C. Marshall or anybody else is that, but. It, it, would, it intrigues me at least to, to have part of the 350 be set aside as a as a innovative technologies fund that that um, would have to come back to the TBD board to be appropriated. But at least we've we've pointed out to the public that you know, we're looking at these technologies and we're going to we've set aside some money to to actually examine them if, if opportunities come along and if it turns out no opportunities come along then we take the extra money and then put it into the street fund anyways but at least we have some money that we've we've set aside as a as a area for innovative technologies that because clearly we're going to need to be tackling them and you know Bruce has been talking about for over a year now different kind of apps that ride sharing apps which I, which I think are very intriguing and um, and uber type incentives and and again I think you know, I, I, you know, Bruce has got a lot of good ideas in that respect, and but I'd like to have something there that we can use to potentially fund some some of that stuff. I kind of have a different take on it. I, I'm always apprehensive when we put a uh, pool of money in, in an area. Um, it it has a it has a, a um, habit of of going away for uh, less vetted programs than we might otherwise. 
Um, and I'll remind you that a good philosophy on this type of stuff is to be close followers and not leaders on new technology. Uh, let you know, Martha Vineyards bust the code on how to do autonomous vehicles. That's fine. Once uh, Martha Vineyards or 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 wherever um, figures out how to do these technologies and validates those technologies, that's when we want to jump in. But uh, I would I would uh, uh, warn the council on having a pot of money there to fool around with with uh, brand new uh, technology, just like. You know, it should be a rule in the family. You never buy the first model car, and that's that's the same thing. You always buy the second or third model car. Uh, let some other community uh, figure out the first model of, of autonomous cars and what what not. Any other discussion? Um, I attended the transportation conference and I was blown away by the amazing ideas that are coming very quickly. And I mean, I, I, I certainly don't think it's a wise use of city resources to throw money at uh, something totally experimental that, um, you know, invest money that way. But I think it could be very wise for Mercer Island to sort of volunteer to be a pilot project. We have a closed community, a very close community as well as closed and uh, this would be a very good place for a company to do a pilot project and I think we should be very open to that to the new technologies that are all around us and it wouldn't um, uh, it wouldn't necessarily need to be a, a, a huge cost to us I'm intrigued by the suggestion and have a question if it's authorized Within the transportation benefit district, to use our funds in that in that way. As you were talking, Christina Shook, Assistant City Attorney. As you were talking, I looked up, was looking through the statute, and remember that transportation benefit district funds can only be used for transportation improvement, which has a specific definition in the RCW, and that may include, and I'm reading here, investment in newer existing highways principal arterials of regional significance, high capacity transportation, public transportation, and other transportation projects and programs of regional or statewide significance. It says including transportation demand management. So I think we'd have to probably analyze that more factually. You know, if a project was presented to us, we'd have to look at that pretty carefully. So I, I think the principle is, is interesting, if not intriguing, whether it comes from the Transportation Benefit District funds or from elsewhere in the city. But the point is, we're starting these discussions with Sound Transit, with Metro, with Washdot, et cetera. So it's not just within the construct of the TBD that we should be looking at what some of these innovative solutions are, but more broadly when we look at the mobility of the island as a whole. So I think for me what the question is, you know, how do we go forward? How do we start to determine what the priorities or the principles would be, whether it's on island, which I suspect it would be an on island initiative potentially. But then also how can we look at, you know, to your point, leveraging some of the experiences, if not best practices, that are going to come out of either private entities, public partner or public private partnerships, or at a state level. Um, so I think this is this is an idea that merits Further discussion, like I said, I don't know that it's specific to the Transportation Benefit District, but I'd be interested in the city manager's approach and, and thinking in the next couple weeks or whenever about how we would go about identifying what could or could not be within that, that range of options. Yeah, that is certainly something we can, we can start looking at. Um, <clears throat> tonight's probably not the night to land how we're going to do that. And then what, a related question that I just had for Chip, which is relates to the question posed right now as far as this budget proposal goes. Chip, if, if money were pulled out of the 350 to set aside for something like this, would that require us to rebalance TIP, meaning shift projects or adjust projects? In, in short, yes. Yeah, so you can't, right, right now you have a TIP that's premised on this 350 being transferred in this way, so it, it, it would take some more thought to, to retool how we have to approach that. But I do agree that we need to, we do need to be watching these emerging technologies, and then it'll be up to this body to decide, are we, do we want to be on the cutting edge, or, or is, is Councilmember Cyril explained, be, be just behind that so we see how the technologies are working. 
I think uh, I, I agree with Debbie's thought on this that we've got a big conversation with Sound Transit just around the corner and part of that is going to need to be innovative solutions to the problems that we have and, and face and that will become even um, uh, more pointed as we go forward into this construction phase with, with uh, light rail. So I, I think there's going to be a, a real opportunity and a real need for us to think outside the box in terms of how we solve our transportation problems. But I, I think the this particular um, revenue stream probably belongs going right into projects and that the conversation about broader um, solutions belongs within the context of that sound transit conversation initially and, and perhaps to the extent that we're looking at it uh, quickly or feel there's a need to look at it quickly, it's part of the bucket of money that we've already set aside to do the negotiations with sound transit. So that as we have that negotiation, we can be in a position to say, uh, here's something that we think could be a solution. We need to get to the point where we can uh, sketch it out such that we can be calling for it within the, the context of the mitigation. Any other comments? I'm looking for a motion. I move to adopt the 2015-2016 TBD budget as shown in Table 1 of the October 19, 2015 Mercer Island Transportation Benefit District Agenda Item entitled 2015-2016 Budget. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and second. All those in favor? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Discussion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. The uh, next item on regular business is on the uh, recent legislative update on possible changes to the TBD. Christine? So good evening, Christina Shook, Assistant City Attorney. And so now the, since the last TBD meeting, uh, there has been some important changes to the legislation affecting transportation benefit districts that came in the form of the second, see if I can get this right, engrossed substitute Senate bill, which went in um, 5987, which went into effect in July. So as described in the staff report, there are two main changes to TBD laws. The first is the ability for a city, a city as a legislative authority to assume the TBD. And the second is to increase the non-voted vehicle license fee from $20 to $40 after a period of two years. So first, let's look at assumption. So again, the city council, as the legislative authority, can assume the transportation benefit district. So as you know, the TBD is a separate legal entity. And the assumption allows the city to assume the control of the TBD. And the bill maps out a specific procedure to complete assumption. And that first is to the city of council, of course, would adopt an ordinance of its intent. And this ordinance sets a public hearing. Then the public hearing has to be <laughs> noticed and held. After the public hearing, the city council determines if it's in the pub public interest to assume the TPD. If that happens, the TPD board is then abolished, and the city council assumes the rights, powers, immunity, function, and obligations of the TBD. The assets would be assigned to the city and any pending business would be continued and it would come before the city council. So I thought it would be interesting to share with you something we learned in the last week about what other cities are doing. And this comes via WCIA. They sent out an email to the member cities asking what cities were going to do about assumption. And they gave us the results, which I thought was very nice of about 20 cities, actually 20 cities that responded, you can see the vast majority, 40% are undecided what they're going to do. 35% are assuming in 2015, or plan to assume in 2015. And 15% plan to assume in 2016, 
plan to assume in 2016 or later, and only 10% are not planning to assume at all. The second major change is the vehicle license fee. So bef prior to this legislation, there was a non-voted fee limit of $20. It's been raised to $40. This can be done after the $20 fee has been imposed for 24 months. I'm happy to take questions, but the next steps, no action can be taken by the TBD board on assumption that is, of course, the city council's purview. And we plan to bring assumption before the city council in the near future. Would that enable us to get rid of the 15,000 of professional services? Yes. I think we should do it. <laughs> It's an easy one. <laughs> well, in, but simply, is there any downside to it? I, I mean, it sounds like there's some savings there, but uh, any other pros or cons to well, merging? I made a little, a small list. I ran it by Francie just a few minutes before. I think, I think some of the benefits are, you know, it ends the artifice, if you will, of the TBD. And of course, the dec decreased administrative procedure and costs. The costs specifically are, you know, we pay a premium to WCIA, and there's an audit cost, and then reimbursement for administrative services. The disadvantages, of course, there's an extra process to, to complete assumption. I expect that will take at least a month of, you know, staff and council and t council time. And I guess there probably could be some unexpected hiccups along the way in that process and procedures, a little bit unknown. Francie had brought up one other thing. I mean, the TBD board, I guess, gives a particular sounding sounding board for transportation, so that might be a possible disadvantage in, in some eyes. Ben, Benson will lose his title. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I can see through this, staff. You guys are just conniving away to get Benson off of his pinnacle there. I'm standing side by side with you, Benson. I'm not going to let it happen. <laughs> uh, it avoids the impeachment proceedings. Uh, so, you know, of the two, there's two cities that have elected not to do this. Do you know why they have elected not to do this? I don't know. It's actually, we just got numbers from WCA. It was just a quick rundown. I can say that Black Diamond is the city that I know has already completed assumption. They did it on October 1st, but I don't know who is not assuming and why. But that's a good question. There's no action item here. Is there any other questions? Well, um, I think there's nothing else on the regular business agenda. Is there any new business? Okay. So I was at the Sound Cities meeting on Wednesday, and um, there's a long presentation by Metro and by Sound Transit in the pre-PIP meeting. Um, which I thought was very interesting. And, and one thing that was that came out is that Metro in particular is trying to reach out to all the cities that they serve and has formed a technical advisory committee which every city is allowed to have a member of. I asked Noel and I guess Kirsten is, is, the, is the nominal member of it um, but from what Noel said in his email, I guess you're following it, but you're not actually participating in it. And and I would just encourage staff to maybe rethink that, um, because based upon at least the presentation I received, there's an opportunity there to um, to get more metro services down the road if we engage in that committee and engage in this whole process that Metro is going through right now. So I, I think there's some opportunities there and, and I think that you know, that the technical advisory committee seems to be the forum for us to, to really engage with Metro on that.